Welcome to Rodas Whiskey Infused Rants. Today I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about black metal because past few months have been quite colorful or turbulent to say the least when it comes to black metal and the events and bands related to that. So pour yourself some good drink and uh, let's get on with it with the rant I mean. So those of you who have been following uh, metal websites and news are pretty much aware that black metal in 2017 and 2018 has been quite different compared to well previous years many of them at least now i'm not sure exactly which way i should start to kind of open this idea up but i'm gonna tell you a little bit what i have in mind inquisition and uh, child pornography or at least new pre-teenagers that's one topic. Uh, Vatine uh, kicking off a member due to doing a hand sign of 1940s Germany. Uh, Destroyer 666 telling people to suck some flesh stick because of uh, some gigs organized in the United States. Uh, Target getting cancelled to war because of the swastika symbols. And uh, well, then something else also. But that's pretty much the idea. Well, I could start basically with this idea. Nowadays, black metal is divided in two. And by two, I don't mean musical styles or anything like that. But to the real deal, to the bands that are kind of a dangerous, vicious, uh, kind of a feral animals, something that is kind of a force to be reckoned with, or at least bands that seem kind of a dangerous or at least you know beyond normal moral beyond money and all that stuff and then there is this other herd which i could call the safe group the group that is kind of holding itself back because there is money involved you know people's livelihood maybe um, during life and in generally speaking, you know, bands that have to kind of, you know, uh, be conservative in what they do in order not to, you know, fuck up their career in a band. And that reminds me why black metal used to be so much more interesting and dangerous, you know, in the past. So let's talk about the past. Uh, in 1980s, when black metal was basically born, uh, Things were just, you know, new and fresh, and uh, nobody had any rules how to operate in this field of uh, extreme metal. So bands did what they wanted and uh, sang about topics however they pleased, and things were kind of, well, cool in that sense. I mean, those bands were pioneering a subgenre that nobody knew where it was going. Nobody could see basically what was happening but you know lyrically it was about uh, being kind of anti-christian being satanic being about dark and evil topics fictive or not but anyhow it was something uh something new yet basically something that humankind have always been fascinated about you know darkness and evil and what lies beyond death is there something that we should you know, see in the shadow realm or whatever. Now, when 1990s, you know, black metal was taking huge steps or made basically leaps. There were death threats going back in, uh, back and forth in the Nordic countries between bands. There were violence. There were arsons. Churches were burned. There were even murders. Everything was kind of dangerous, and black metal was not only a hot topic because of being anti-christian and you know blasphemous and and all that stuff there were actually you know things that were done people were criminals people were like uh, bad it was more than just some evil words on a piece of paper it was more than just some sinister riffs and you know visions of you know dark role-playing material no matter how much these bands had taken names from tolkien or other fantasy literature but you know in general there were 
you know, bad shit happening. Uh, you know, think of Person and Mayhem, you know, the murder, think of Dai Jackson guys and so many others, you know, there were crimes, vicious ones too. And uh, these death threats, even though nobody basically died because of them, you know, it was a different world. It was so much different from, you know, basically other metal that was seen more of a kind of a safe, you know. Even though trash metal and dead metal, they were vicious topics and all that stuff. But in generally, people were just, you know, laid back and enjoying whatever drugs or otherwise. Uh, there were not bad stuff happening. That was more of, a, you know, I don't know, rap music stuff. But back in the 90s, black metal was kind of a dangerous and crazy in so many ways. Now, of course, you know, when people get older, it's not like they want to, you know, have their lives necessarily uh, you know, to do deal with this kind of stuff. But that is one of the reasons why black metal became so interesting. It was not just, you know, those evil words or sinister riffs. It was more real than just that. Well, as years progressed and people matured and new bands came into the uh, existence of black metal in the realm of satanic music, things kind of started to, uh, in a way, calm down. Not only because, you know, certain people were already behind bars, serving time and all that stuff, but also because, you know, new bands, I mean, the huge waves of new bands uh, joined this black metal cult or scene or whatever you want to call it. And uh, so it kind of mildered. I mean, being part of that and I never basically did anything but I mean, I've had my share, but I never went to jail or anything like that. So it's not like for me to judge that, you know, what happened with, you know, getting milder. But even in Finland, which is a very safe country in, you know, global terms, you know, there were like people getting beaten or, you know, tires of a tour bus, you know, being, you know, hold and all that stuff. So basically there was something more happening anyhow than, you know, other genres of music or even metal music. So it was still a little bit more dangerous. There were random arsons and whatnot, and even this kind of a bad black metal related uh, crime in late 90s, early 2000s. I'm not sure exactly which year it was, but this kind of a, you know, murder when a group of young metalheads were having a good time and then one people were killed and you know even eaten kind of a you know cannibal kind of thingy so there was this kind of danger element of danger around and not just on behalf of christian people but black metal was seen something like that's no normal thing now like i said uh, when it 2000s you know hit the scene and Everything kind of started to mild up. Nobody was caring about so much like anti-Christian or whatever anti-religion. It was not like so mild anymore. Nobody gives a shit because it doesn't mean anything. I mean, even the church and those might be like, oh, you should not do sin. So what? It's not like bad things were happening. Not in a big scale anyway. Obviously, certain individuals did something. But like I said, the scene was getting bigger and all these bad things were getting more rare. So eventually, it seems that whole black metal scene, if there is one to begin with, but you get the idea. I mean, I don't believe in global scene or whatnot. I just think local scale. But on, you know, globally, I think things were getting more safer. It was more about having fun and, you know, meeting people and, you know, digging same kind of music rather than, you know, anything bad or stuff like that. So, things started to get kind of a safe. And with that safe, or safeness, safety, uh, I think uh, black metal kind of lost some of its magic. Now, religious black metal bands started to emerge, you know, in, in bigger numbers. And I think in some way that was to reach even more extreme ways of, you know, uh, in black metal. Because, I mean, 
this kind of everyday, you know, mundane thing had to change, had to become a bigger thing. So some people went religious the opposite way versus, you know, Christianity, Islam, Judaism, whatever. And in a way that was more extreme because it kind of, you know, made the whole uh, tree rattle a bit. Some people who were, were anti-religious anti kind of saw those other people going, you know, black metal religious, kind of like in a weird, awkward way, like how we should react to that. I mean, they are kind of like brothers and sisters, but they are religious and we are anti-religious. So what should we do? But I mean, nothing bad basically stirred up because of that. Well, not in a big scale anyway. Now, then there was this other more mundane, more political, uh, you know, wave of black metal or branch or how to wait, whatever to say it. And that, of course, kind of gave birth to a national socialist black metal, aka Nazi black metal. And of course, we can see those roots in like oi music and uh, rock against communism and uh, basically any right wing, right wing movement, be it, you know, of pagan heritage or just, you know, uh, nationalist thing, racial things and all that stuff. Basically, very, you know, basic values, redneckish or not, started to uh, seep into the black metal or basically black, some black metal people started to adopt these ideas in, you know, black metal and things started to, you know, stir up. So these more like liberal kind of rebellious uh, way of extreme metal started to change. I mean, black metal has never been basically a uh, left-wing thingy, but it has been kind of like a uh, anti-politic and still is to many people. And there's no wonder why it is like that. I mean, I try to be, a, uh, be as apolitical person as I possibly can, but still there are people who just want to box me on the, on the left or right or whatever. And I just try to not care. But the thing is, these kind of people started to emerge more and more in numbers and suddenly it made more sense. And now you're like, what the fuck are you defending those Nazis? No, I'm not. I'm just trying to explain here what happened. And the thing is what happened. Nazis were still seen as a bad guys because for many people, they are the bad guys, the ultimate evil, if you will, because 1940s and World War II and all that stuff, Holocaust, you know, so when people started advocating, you know, this kind of a right-wing stuff, and namely Nazism, you know, doing uh, certain hand signs, you know, those certain greetings right-wing people do, and uh, advocating speech of like Adolf Hitler and all that stuff, it made people scared, because suddenly they felt like not only these guys are, you know, walking on thin ice when it comes to the topic in a political way, but they are all also, you know, bringing up waves of hatred and, you know, nationalist things, racial ones and whatever. So now they were not so occult and fictional. Suddenly they were becoming more reality, you know, connecting the dots between the mundane everyday life and black metal. So people who were already, already ideologically charged got this kind of a new batch of flames surrounding them. These flames that would, you know, which would ignite based on, you know, uh, well, political stuff. No, this cat behind the window, see? Right there. She's watching. So, it became kind of like a new wave of being dangerous. Kind of pre let's make black metal dangerous again slogan started to emerge. And so black metal was getting more and more divided. And now with birth of, you know, more kind of a rural nature oriented black metal, which I could basically label nowadays as green metal, if you will. I'm talking about bands like Wolves in the Throne Room and stuff like that, which are absolutely uh, taking steps away from traditional black metal topics such as Satanism, Satan worshipping, devil worship, uh, evil, and all those high nose things. So basically, that kind of a liberal left-wing thing was also growing. 
So now we have like two different borders coming up, the right wing and the left wing. And obviously you see my hands in a different way than I'm doing. So never mind about my hand signs. I'm just trying to make this more, well, easy to understand. No, anyway, uh, so black metal scene was getting more and more divided. There were these kind of right wing people advocating Nazism. There were these green metal people advocating nature and all that stuff. And, you know, talking about liberal values and whatever. Then there was the people of occult. And then there was kind of black metal traditionalists, which didn't seem to fit any of these given boxes. Not to mention more bizarre individuals who were none of these major subgenre boxes or labels or whatever. So things started to change. And now that we have gone even more uh, into kind of a liberal world, I mean, we're constantly reading about topics such as safe space and we have these Me Too campaigns and all that stuff. I mean, they're surely important, but it's hard for me to see those in the same way that people in like different countries and places. But I mean, black metal used to be more dangerous in so many ways. And now when we see like uh, these kind of uh, witch hunts, you know, for example, Marduk was recently, I mean like this week when I was filming this on Thursday evening, like Marduk was charged with, you know, kind of a uh, Nazi allegations because it seemed some people who are in uh, playing instruments in Marduk might have been ordering online propaganda stuff. I mean, like, wow. And, and Marduk has been already, you know, been accused of, you know, doing Nazi stuff because they have World War II uh, themes in their albums and lyrics and, you know, cover art. And they are being called fascist and whatnot. And, you know, Antifa has obviously reacted to this. Band themselves has, like, basically said, there's no truth to these accusations, so piss off. And I cannot blame them. Like, I mean, if people is a, if a person is a Nazi, he's most likely to say, I'm a Nazi. But if he is not, I mean, why the hell he or she would, you know, uh, admit being such a person or political person or whatever. Now, like Dark Case recently, when they had to, you know, uh, cancel their tour, it all became, you know, or started with basically having one, you know, uh, painted swastika on some like 15 years ago. Made absolutely no sense, but suddenly, you know, grew into massive biblical proportions, basically. So kind of a clusterfuck what happened there. And Inquisition guy was, you know, uh, found out to be somewhat guilty of having kind of a teenage nudity or pre-teenage nudity pictures. Uh, so kind of a, there were kind of a pedophile accusations and that band got just, you know, kicked out of the label Season of Mist, which I can understand, but it's basically all these cases are showing that, that things are getting weird in black metal. Now, also there was this Vatine case when somebody found a picture where one of the Vatine members was doing this uh, third Reich hail, you know, the hand sign. And when they got Nazi accusations, they just kicked the guy out of the band before any good, anybody could even spell the name of the band. And uh, I haven't even bothered to watch their reactions or comments from Vatine today, because I mean, I've been talking about Vatine before here and to be honest, I don't want to target the band anymore. I'm just saying that these are things that happen. And then there was this Destroyer 666 uh, gigs in United States where people are, you know, talking about these kind of a safe space, what thing is and whatnot, and they don't want to have uh, sexism and whatever here. And, and you know, this Me Too hashtag was there. And basically the main man behind the band, well, told in a very brutal way, something like along the lines, like maybe they just need hard dick. Not a very politically correct way to put it, but uh, I mean, I can kind of understand and even respect that kind of a reply considering he's a black metal artist, not a pop artist who just have to be political correct to, you know, get, you know, money 
in millions of fans and all that stuff and piss nobody. But that is the problem in nowadays black metal. Some people have to, you know, be kind of a censoring themselves in order not to get tours and gigs cancelled or, you know, festival thingies be threatened by Antifa and whatnot. So, like I said, it's been divided furthermore. I mean, like, besides all these previous boxes I mentioned, it has been, you know, divided in even more into these kind of a safe side players, you know, like, oh no, we are not the bad guys, we didn't do anything, you know, there's no nuts in the band, and if somebody, you know, do, does this and that, and they start to explaining and blah, blah, blah. So, they just, you know, go away. And then there are these bands that simply don't care, or even are proud of what they are doing. So, I mean, it seems like black metal is kind of losing its edge in so many ways, in so many bands. But then again, maybe this is the time when actually the good and the bad seeds are, you know, being separated from each other. And I don't know where this all is going, because it's clear that nowadays black metal is not the same as it used to be back in the 90s or even early 2000s. It seems that nowadays more and more stuff are, you know, trying to be put in the box called black metal, even though they are just, you know, how should I put it? They are kind of like safe players. They don't want to do anything extreme. Sure, they might, you know, go Hail Satan and all that stuff, but at the same time, they are being given these Grammy Awards. They are, you know, handshaken, handshaken by some minister who will, you know, give them a medal of, you know, promoting music of the country and all that stuff. So it's kind of, we're kind of losing all of the edge there is to black metal. And of course, this is, this kind of action is, you know, be getting reaction when when things are not extreme or dangerous anymore. Uh, people want to see them go even further. People people want to see them go more dangerous. So it doesn't matter what kind of people like Antifa and other you know safe players want to do or whatever. These kind of reactions will I think will just you know. It, it will mean that even more extreme things will happen because it seems that, you know, if you want to cause bad blood and make yourself hated and seen as a bad evil guy or one promoting these things, then you have to go extreme, be it Nazism, be it, I don't know, child pornography or whatever, you know, or doing arson, killing somebody because, I mean, even though these things might not be acceptable. For example, I wouldn't, you know, like tolerate child pornography. But, I mean, I understand why people would, you know, go after these kind of things. You know, why, I mean, Black Metal has always been music that, you know, promotes, uh, you know, ideas of like murder and death and rape and violence, burning down the cities, carpet bombing, places like Vatican, you know, worshipping devil. I mean, worshipping devil shouldn't be, you know, just like, I want to have my four o'clock latte macchiato while I'm watching some reality TV and eating nachos and, you know, everything would be nice. I mean, black metal isn't supposed to be nice. So, I mean, like, it's, it's no wonder it's getting divided. And those people who won't get this idea Black metal should be dangerous. Well, they are not getting the idea of black metal in the first place. They might like to hear the riffs of a certain band with a certain sound, with a certain cover, but they don't want to be part of it. And they're going to be judging it. And that's, in my opinion, totally okay. Because, I mean, if you can't stand the heat, stay the hell out of the kitchen. So, to conclude this over-length video, let's make black metal dangerous again. Wanna be part of it or wanna get out? You decide. Cheers.